to talk with us further about organizing and narratives, especially in Seattle today, is my guest, Marcus Green, who's the founder and editor-in-chief of the South Seattle Emerald. Marcus, welcome. A pleasure to be here. So um, tell us about the Emerald and how it came to be. It's only a few years old. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little over three and a half years old. Um, I originally founded it after a, a stint in the investment world. I, I came back home, uh, wanted to do something that I thought it was purposeful and telling stories of my neighborhood and the place that I grew up in uh, was that purpose. Uh, you, you've spoken earlier about ways in which it wasn't just that you wanted to come home, but that you felt that home, Rainier Beach, where you grew up mm -hmm. in South Seattle generally, was subject to a very distorted sense of story, right? Mm -hmm. It was all negative stories, all about blight or crime or mm -hmm. violence or gangs. And part of the responsibility you felt to actually offer a countervailing set of stories about the the positive, right? Right. I mean, we are the, you know, the, the old cliche, you are the stories that you tell yourself and, and about yourself. And for me, I was tired of someone else, some other organization that was, was not embedded in the area telling stories about it um, in, in a very sensationalistic manner. Um, for me, I wanted to tell the everyday, the, the, the routine, the, um, because there is beauty in the everyday. There is beauty in the routine. And for us uh, at the Emerald, it was not about telling, talking about the, the, the death there, as we say, uh, that, you know, that, that passes for coverage of area. Uh, it was about talking the life there, because there, it's an extremely rich life that uh, people live there. And the thing about chronicling these kinds of stories of life and creation in everyday life in a community like uh, Rainier Beach or South Seattle generally is you create a positive feedback loop, right? Because it's not just that you're reporting these stories, it's that people see these stories, right? Absolutely. And they see themselves reflected, and that changes the way people think about their own place uh, in neighborhood. Absolutely. I tell a story often of, um, of a young man who I, I met uh, uh, a few days after I came back, actually, from uh, L.A. With, at the Hedgefund World. Um, and he said, uh, I, I, we got into a discussion, and I said, uh, you know, what do you think is good about your neighborhood here? And he said, there's nothing good about it, nothing at all. And I said, why? He said, because they, they tell me that there isn't, and I don't see anything, you know. And um, actually, a few weeks later, I found out that the young man um, was killed in a... Uh, um, in a robbery, unfortunately. Um, he was trying to rob somebody, and it didn't turn out great. Um, and to this day, I always think, you know, and, and maybe this is a bit too, too much of a, of a pat on the back for what we do at the Emerald, but I always think, what if there would have been an Emerald around to tell, you know, this young man um, stories of his neighborhood that were happening right under his nose? Well, his haunting line that, you know, they, they tell us that there's nothing good about this neighborhood. Um, you know, the they there is an amorphous right. power structure out there that is framing a dominant narrative about what you can and can't be, right? Uh, but part of your work here is kind of countering that they with an us, right? right? With a different us, right? Um, and the other dimension of what's interesting about your work at the Emerald right now is that that us is changing, right? South Seattle <laughs> is in incredible flux right now. Gentrification, yeah. different sh kinds of diversity and change. How are you grappling with the changing notion of us? Because it's not a fixed, static uh, neighborhood. No, it is not. It, it, it is definitely evolving, shall we say. Um, uh, an intern of mine recently said, uh, Mr. Green, do you feel that all you're doing is documenting the death crawl of a community that used to be? And, and will you one day just be the, the Kent Emerald, and you know, I didn't really know what to say to that, but I did. That's a good question from an intern. <laughs> Hire that intern. <laughs> that I, I might have to, Ellis, if you're watching. You're, um, no, but uh, I think of terms of, of the word unity, and unity being not um, that we all agree, or, or that we are all somehow, um, uh, you know, somehow bound by the the same thought process. I think of unity in the sense that we are all willing to be in a room together to talk about these problems and. Here's the thing, you have people who are, are new to the area, people who have, have been there for 15 years, people who have been there for 30. And at the end of the day, they all, wherever they're coming from in their vantage points, uh, they all love th this area. They all want to continue to be here. Most of them have moved because of the, moved to the area originally because of the diversity. And then you have other people who are like, okay, now we're less diverse because <laughs> these people have moved here. But at the end of the day, I think you have people who are attempting to buy in to a sense of community and, and define what that community is and it being like, okay, yes, I do realize that, you know, I, I just moved here two years ago and I, and I do work at Amazon. But at the end of the day, I am attempting to be a part of this community, meaning I am attempting to not only go to um, 
the various social uh, hubs and you know coffee shops, working class places of this area. But I'm trying to, to give back by showing up for those uh, yeah. in, in the community who maybe can't show up. What's striking about this is you're, you're breaking out of a frame of just us, the old timers, and them, the newcomers, right. at, at odds with each other. You're trying to create a bigger circle of us that says, hey, Absolutely. we're all here together trying to figure it out together, how to preserve what was good, but also um, you know, gr grapple with these changes. And um, as you think about the ways in which, in your chronicling, um, different interest groups, citizens, activists, uh, organizers in the neighborhood are using story right. uh, to try to create power, um, who comes to mind is particularly effective at that right now in South Seattle? I would say uh, the group, the environmental justice group Got Green, which is based in Columbia City. Uh, they're, they're great about uh, putting um, people of color, LGBTQIA+, people, poor whites, um, to the forefront in um, their activism work and in, in the activism uh, and environmental um, policies, you know, being enacted at both the state and uh, county and uh, city level. I'd also say there's a grandmother group um, called the Kinship Caregivers, who are in Skyway, um, you know, an area that we cover with the Emerald, who originally, um, after uh, what has been, I believe, a 10-year struggle, has, has finally um, gotten the state to eliminate a means test on uh, benefits for their children, their grandchildren that they are raising. Um, the Washington State was only one of four states in the United States to, to you know, have this sort of prohibitive means test on. Uh, both, both these examples really, um, you know, cut to. Uh, what in our fi final seconds here um, is something that you've said to me before when the cameras weren't rolling mm -hmm. uh, about your responsibility as a journalist, as a storyteller, which is more than just to speak truth to power. T t t tell, me, tell me how you phrase that uh, real briefly. Right, right. I, I say that the maxim in journalism is that uh, your job is to speak uh, truth to power. However, I, I, I say that it's honestly to speak truth to the powerless or those who believe that they are powerless. It reminds them that they are not, that they have efficacy in this life. Mm. Well, uh, Marcus, your work and the work of the South Seattle Emerald is proof of that and uh, ways in which uh, storytelling is not just a one directional uh, act, but it creates this positive feedback loop of, uh, of bottom up civic power. So thanks for all you're doing. Oh, thank you for having me. My guest today has been Marcus Green. He's the founder and editor in chief of the South Seattle Emerald and a great practitioner of organizing in narrative.